I sit on the Courts of Justice Committee, and I want to give you all the story, and because I keep pressing it in the media, when the Republicans say we didn't know, that is not true at all. In the Courts of Justice Committee, NARAL Virginia brought with them, as, as well as the ACLU, ACLU attorney, a pictorial about exactly what we're talking about with a mandated ultrasound and the fact that it will be inserted into a woman's body, a probe, right? Constitutional issues were raised, were discussed, but very briefly, and I was cut off. I tried to amend the bill in committee, and I was shut down. I was told, well, okay, you could just do your amendment on the House floor, and my comment to that was, is that sure, you're sure that's what you want, because that's what happened. Um, and so it really does bother me when, when legislators say they didn't know. They darn well did know, at least those ones on the committee. Um, so we get to the House floor. I speak about the fact that you are going inside a human being's body, and you're using basically a position as, a, as an instrument of the state to enforce its will. And that's totally imp improper. Physicians did start to ring in, ring in, and, and to let their voices be heard that you're interfering with their doctor-patient relationship. Um, so then we have the media blow up, and they always blame Democrats for it. But let me tell you, <laughs> when the media blow up started, it's when one Republican a legislator stood up and said that an abortion is basically a lifestyle choice for men. That's what blew it up. That it was not me, it was not any other Democratic delegate who stood up and spoke, but it was that type of callous statement. And when we're talking about something serious, about constitutionality, about using physicians as an agent of the state, and it's, it's a very odd and scary thing, um, you know, where our voices will always be heard on, on this. So the governor then says, um, I didn't realize it was a, was a you know, internal probe that would be used. And that tells me two things. Either he's not telling the truth, or if he is telling the truth and didn't know, he has no business supporting and say, I support this legislation. He does not know what he's doing. He's not a physician. So anyways, we still have this horrible bill that basically mandates an external procedure. 90% of the cases of when you're terminating a, preg a, a pregnancy occur in the first trimester. So that means the external probe is not going to be able to, I'm sorry, the external ultrasound is not going to be able to, to pick up much of anything at all. Um, so what I suspect the, the intent of the bill was to do was to scare women to say, hey, I see something. Well, now you're going to give them a blank picture, which arguably would make uh, somebody say, well, there's nothing there. So what we do if we have is a mandate that absolutely does nothing. It's going to be, be an expense on a woman. It's, 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 uh, there's no, no coverage for it for the state. With the person hit bill, and, and Marge touched on this a bit, um, it was a fallacy. Bob Marshall is not, he's not my favorite person, but I can also say he's not a dumb person either. He's not dumb, and he knows very well it's had nothing to do with wrongful death. Um, he's very crafty, very skilled, and he knows the Virginia Code, and he could have amended the Virginia Code to talk about wrongful death. So this was, again, a way to build the stage and set the stage for a challenge to Roe v. Wade, and that's all that bill was. And he um, says that. He says that. And he, he has admitted that. Yeah. So he gives a different story. So that bill actually did hit the Senate floor, but then was re-referred back to committee. So we can expect that next year, for sure. There was actually another bill that luckily the uh, sponsor pulled, but I think it was just because we started getting the uproar. And that was a bill that basically set up a legal defense fund with the Attorney General's office to, and what it was, it was to challenge, it was to challenge Roe. Um, and it and had things in there about the termination of pregnancy. Um, so it clearly, and I say a war on women, and I'm criticized for saying that, but that's honestly what it felt like down there. And when you try to speak, we were, I, you know, shut down at every step of the way. But you know, I will do it on the House floor. Luckily, the Speaker did, you know, call on me and acknowledge me. But I also have to say, debate was cut off a lot um, at, at 
motion of a delegate who was designated to stand up and say that they will call the question. So when the comment was made that uh, abortion is a lifestyle choice, we did not have the ability to respond that day on the floor, but we responded by Twitter, and <laughs> and that's you know that's how you know, things started to move on from that. So we still got a lot of work ahead of us. I mean, these things are going to come back. Um, but what is, what is good is that I will have to say the caucus, the Democratic caucus, um, pretty much hung together on that issue um, because it had gone too far, and it was basically a sense that the other side of the aisle was cramming legislation down our throats. And uh, enough was enough, so. I'm here to talk about a new organization that has been formed as a direct result of some of this legislation. Now the only good thing about being on John Stewart was that everybody knew that what was going on in Virginia was very likely going to come to their state next. And so, Women have joined us, and what's been fascinating about this process is, is two groups who are re-engaging. One is moderate Republican women, including women who used to be in the General Assembly with me as Republican elected officials, who are absolutely appalled by the direction that their party has taken. And I think when you begin to see who's giving us money, well, it's the old Mark Warner coalition. It's the Virginians, you know? It's moderate Republican women who are all. But the second group that is giving to us in huge numbers, although not in huge dollar amounts, are young women who are not interested in affiliating with a party, but who will vote with us and who will give us money and who will work for us on issues we care about. So, we call ourselves the Women's Strike Force. We apparently have gotten just terribly under their skin. Um, there are nasty, awful Republican blogs about us. Don't read them, they'll just raise your blood pressure. Um, but um, <coughs> our commitment is to go after the people who voted on personhood, specifically, on personhood, on ultrasound, particularly the really egregious House version, because they knew. Um, and I would say third, although he's already falls into the first category, but Todd Gilbert is in the spec who, who uttered the abortion as a lifestyle choice. You know, he's, there's a, we're going to have a special little collection of them. I think that's right. That's all I can say. We're going to pass the plate again. Those of you who've gone to church in the South, we're going to pass the plate and then we're going to weigh it and then we're going to pass it again. Because we're good. Now, we may not defeat all these people, but we can find Republican women who will run against them in their primary. We can find Democratic women who will run against them in the general. And I'd say this, some of them, if they realize that it's going to cost them a primary and a general every time, a couple of things might happen. One, God knows, they might start voting better. But two is they might decide that really what they'd like to do is, you know, spend a little more time with their family or something. <laughs> um, either one of those, I figure, you know, elevates the General Assembly of Virginia. But... So that's, you know, I have worked in the vineyards for Democrats for a thousand years, and I'm going to continue to work for Democrats, but I feel like this is a way that we can make a difference and can bring back in to the political process groups of people who will otherwise stay out. I mean, this is not money that is otherwise going to you know, the hundred mil lasagna dinner, God love you, but you know, that's not where that's not where they were otherwise going to give. So um, we're bringing it in and we're going to use it and we are um, there there's already real angst and real nervousness on the Republican side. And I, I said the other night on Bettina's program, I said, so to those of you who voted that way, if you think you're hearing footsteps, you're right. Yes. <laughs>